Okay, so today we are going to make bhindi, a very easy way, and I'm using the frozen bhindi that I got from the Indian store. We're going to use about approximately half an onion for one small packet of bhindi, and then we're going to use salt or oil, any vegetable oil will do, and these are masala ka dibba, masala box, a typical Indian, I guess, I don't know if they still have the same thing in India right now that people use but I have been using it for more than 25 years so here we go we are going these are our ingredients and we will start oil, and I'm going to pour the oil in the pan and you need about this much oil the pan was already on high heat and so as you can see the oil has dispersed and then we are going to put the bhindi in it, in the oil. But before we do that, we are going to put a little bit, a quarter teaspoon or half a teaspoon of cumin. So here, this is about half a teaspoon of cumin seeds. We're just going to put it in here. And the oil was hot so it started spluttering I'm using an iron skillet you can use any other um, I recommend iron skillet or non-stick I'm going to put the frozen bhindi directly make sure it's frozen I did not thaw it at all and I'm just going to let it cook it's stirred and we are going to it's going to um, become sticky and have water all over, but the, we use slightly, like, a little more oil than I would in other uh, fresh vegetables. You can make it the same bhindi, you can make it with um, fresh vegetables or fresh bhindi as well. And uh, so we'll let it cook a little bit. And... And then I'll come back to it and just keep it on high, keep it on high flame and just, you know, keep working it and uh, don't break the bhindi, be gentle, you know, um, and we'll just let it soak and then occasionally stir in between. As you can see, it's cooking and now I'm going to add about this much, like a teaspoon of salt in the entire thing. So I like to add the salt in the beginning so it gets infused into the entire dish. And I'm being gentle with the bhindi so not, just not to break it. And you can see my chai on the other side is boiling. My chai recipe is also on my channel. I just prevented it from boiling over. <laughs> okay, so here's the bhindi happening. And we'll let it cook for a little bit more. It's kind of browning. So just keep working it. Make sure it doesn't burn, but then it becomes very soft in between now so we have to be very careful not to you know handle it too much bindi is now bubbling it's kind of soft and stickiness is coming all over do you see it's kind of sticky and that's normal sometimes i also take some of the oil out before i serve it because that's too oily otherwise it's not healthy for you but then in cooking it helps so yeah that's another option. You can use a little less oil, but then, you know, sometimes the bhindi doesn't get fried really well. So, yeah, but you do see kind of stickiness. But that, our masala will take care of that stickiness. So, yeah, let it cook. So, I'm going to make sure I turn the flame down just a tad bit. Because it's an iron skillet and it just needs a lot of heat. As you can see, I had reduced the flame down a little bit. And now, the bhindi is cooking some of the stickiness is also gone and um this is about time to add the masala if the bhindi gets broken then the stickiness goes up okay just fyi 
So let's see here. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the masale right now. Masale means all our spices. Okay. Masala just doesn't mean garam masala. Okay, so here. I made a little well. I'm going to increase the temperature a little bit. Raise the heat up. And there I go with my um, with my masala, my, with my spices. So I'm going to add about a quarter teaspoon of um, of uh, turmeric haldi. I'm going to add a one heaping teaspoon of Dhania powder, coriander powder. I'm going to add a little quality thing more. That soaks up all the stickiness. And then I'm going to add chili powder. I'm going to add a half a teaspoon, maybe a little more. It depends on how much um, how much heat you like in the spice. And then I'm going to I'm gonna stir it. So the turmeric dissolves in oil. It's, it's um, it's soluble in oil, so that's why we don't see the turmeric powder coming into our mouth. If we cook it properly in oil, and then I'm just gonna stir, and then that's why it gives it such a nice color to the dish because of its um, because it's soluble in oil and uh, as you can say fat soluble and. Um, there we go. Nice. See how nice our dish is already looking. We still have to add one more main ingredient to this. And suddenly all the stickiness has gone away. Do you see it? See? All the stickiness is like disappeared into thin air. Okay. Next, we are going to add that onion we chopped. You know, I chopped it into just like these kind of long slivers. You know, they're not very thin, but they're like medium you know medium size like that about this much so that is our onion and we are going to add the onion into our uh, bhindi that is cooking bhindi is also known as okra by the way so i scooped up all the onions in my pan, uh, in my spatula and i'm just going to throw them over the bhindi there you go and just go ahead and stir it carefully not to break the bindi again just kind of fold it in there you go you can cut them smaller too if you like but um, my boys like it this way so I'm just going to keep it like that And then now these onions are going to cook along with the bhindi, with the okra, and um, they're going to reduce, they're going to get softened, and I will let them cook until they're caramelized along with the bhindi, because um, if they don't, then the bhindi is very sticky, especially we use the frozen one, but as you can see, it did not matter that we use the frozen bhindi, you can still make the dish the same way. There you go. And I'm going to let it cook for a little bit. Just like that. Um, optional item is also, you can add this thing called chaat masala. So you can add the chaat masala too, but um, I don't always add it. It, and remember, chaat masala is a little bit salty, so you have to adjust your salt accordingly. I'm going to let it cook a couple of minutes now. Keep stirring it in between uh, just to be sure that you know things are not sticking to the bottom or burning. Because it, it can burn. And I'm cooking this on, on a medium-high flame. And it's an iron skillet, so the heat retains quite well in this. Um, make sure that we are not breaking the bhindi, but then the bhindi is happening, it's looking good, looking pretty good. Okay, 
And you might want to add more salt if you feel like it's not salty enough. I'm stirring this um, in between here to make sure that it's not sticking at the bottom and it's not breaking. You have to be very gentle with a light hand, kind of. But as you can see, the bhindi is really becoming crisp. And you see this? I like to buy the bhindi or okra from the Indian grocery stores because I've noticed that the ones that I get it at the regu regular grocery store like Safeway, the okra has um, the ends of the vegetable, you know, the the top portion where it attaches to the plant. And I do not like that because that doesn't cook well and it, it's good for like stews or gumbos and that kind of thing but to make this type of vegetable I like to get my okra from the Indian store. The bhindi there does not have the you know the stem, stem part of it, uh, the top and the end. So, and every time you get it, the packages, you open a package, it's a surprise. Sometimes it's very bright green, sometimes it's a little dulled in color. So it just depends what time, um, how it's packaged or how long the bhindi has been sitting in the freezer. But you just have to take your chances. Or buy fresh vegetables. And you can cook the fresh ones exactly the same way. You just have to cook it maybe slightly less. But yeah, see, the bindi, you, you can't tell the difference that it was frozen, and it's so convenient, you know. You can just throw it in on your way to work, you can pick it up if you don't have it, or you can just you know, take it out of your freezer and cook it, doesn't take too long. And I think our bindi is now done. So I'm just going to um, turn the stove off. And I'm going to uh, let it just cook open. Never, ever, ever cover the bhindi. Ever. So do not cover it. Just keep, um, there you go. I'll let it cook so the onions will get more crispy. And it's an iron skillet, so the cooking will go on for a little bit. But I just want to make sure that um, it's all one single layer that way nothing is um, getting soft and mushy because if when the moisture goes in there the okra starts becoming sticky here. now we'll just let it cool down a little bit or we can just serve it immediately in the in a serving dish and enjoy it with naan or roti and um, that's it so for my boys enjoy